Welcome back. So I'm looking at page 11 in the workbook, chapter 5, and we're going to take a look at a couple of problems that are going to be solved by using uh, factoring and equations. So the question starts off telling you the area of a rectangle is given by the expression 2g squared minus 19g plus 45 square centimeters. Determine the expressions representing the length and the width. Make a diagram. So I have the diagram set up for us already. And so you, may, you need to remember that area is equal to base times height. And so when I ask you to find the expression for base, length and width or base and height, uh, you simply have to factor that trinomial. Now, 2g squared minus 19g plus 45 needs to be factored. And so this is a complex trinomial. Um, you're not solving equals zero or anything like that. You're just trying to break this into two brackets. Uh, and one of them is going to represent the length and one of them is going to represent the width. So it's a matter of knowing how to factor. So here's my factors of two. And I'm going to put them backwards also. And I got the factors of 45 because you need to look at all the possibilities. And this is the most organized way of doing it so that you don't leave any behind. And I'm looking for the pair that's going to add to give 19. So pretty quickly here, 2 times 9 is 18 and 5. That's not going to work. 2 times 5, 1 times 15. Uh, that's not going to work. 2 times 3, 1 times 15 looking at all the possibilities, and I realize, okay, this is going to take me forever if I don't do this in an organized fashion. So, you get to practice this, you got to get good at it. And the pair that's going to work is going to be the 1, 2, and the 5, 9. Because 1 times 9 is equal to 9, and 2 times 5 is equal to 10. So your first bracket is going to be 1 and 5, or at least one of the brackets is going to be 1 and 5, and the other bracket is going to be 2 and 9. And let's put the G in place. The plus sign makes our life a little bit easier because it means that the two signs are going to be the same. They're both going to be negatives or they're both going to be positives. And since they have to add to give a negative 19, they're both going to be negatives. You can double check to make sure 10G and 9G are both negative. So now I can label this into the diagram and say that G minus 5 looks like it's going to be the smaller one. So I'll put it here, G minus 5. And the 2g minus 9 is going to be my base. Question B asks me to calculate the value of g. So I'm going to actually find out the value of g if the area is 105. So I'm going to set this up again, 2g squared minus 19g plus 45. And this time it's telling me that it's equal to 105. So now I have an equation to work out. And the way we solve polynomial equations is to bring everything to one side. The, whoops, 19, is going to be um, positive 45, negative 105 equals 0, which is 2g squared minus 19g minus 70, 60 equals 0. Now, here's where I doctored things up a little bit because I knew that we we're going to run into this question. So I'm going to slide this rectangle out of the way where I conveniently have the factors of 2 and the factors of 60 so I can do this factoring. And I've got to find the pairs that are going to multiply to give 60 or at least the factors give 60 and subtract to give 19. So which one of these pairs, these cross-check products, are going to give me a an addition, a subtraction of 19. Well, jumping to the answer right away, and you would have to go through this on your own. 2 times 12 is 24, and 1 times 5 is 5. 24 minus 5 is equal to 19. So one of the brackets is going to be 2 and 5. The other bracket is going to be 1 and 12, and they're both going to be Gs. And because it has to give a negative 19g, the larger product, which would be the 2 times the 12, is going to be negative, and the smaller product is going to be positive. So I kind of skipped through that pretty quickly, but if you wanted to see how that was done, you need to just review the other video. Now I take the answers for both of the brackets, okay? And I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to put them over on the... No, actually, I'm going to just put them underneath here and say g is equal to the opposite of 5 over 
2, and g is equal to the opposite of negative 12, which is positive 12, over 1, which is just simply 12, right? One of these answers is not going to make any sense. If you have negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5, and you try plugging it in here, it's going to give me a negative height for my rectangle. And that's not going to make any sense. So when you're doing these application questions, usually you have to throw out one of the solutions, in this case, the negative. So my answer is going to be g is equal to 12. So I, have, I found the answer, g is equal to 12. The last part of this asks you to determine the numerical values for the perimeter and the area. So we need to find the side lengths, g minus 5. Let's put this in a different color. G minus 5 is going to be 12 minus 5, which is equal to 7 for my height. And let me put that underneath. And G 12, 2 times 12 minus 9 is going to be 24 minus 9 equals 13, 4, 15 for the base. Let me double check. 12 minus 5 is 7. 24 minus 9 is 15. So the perimeter is going to be 2 times 7 plus 2 times 15, which is going to be equal to 14 plus 30 is 44. And the area is base times height. And so that's going to be 15 times 7, 7 times 10, whatever. You're going to multiply this out and you get 105. And you think for a second, wait a sec, why does that 105 seem so familiar? Well, we actually were told that a couple of seconds ago. So hopefully that helps you a little bit for setting this up. Moving on to the next example. Again, working with length and width for a rectangle. The length of a rectangle, rectangular field, is 10 meters shorter than twice its width. So we have to know how to interpret this into a question. And the rule always is, whatever they're comparing it to, that's what we're going to make the variable. So I make the width equal to W, and the length is going to be 10 meters shorter than twice the width. So here's twice the width, and that's going to be 10 meters shorter than twice the width. If the area of the field is 1,000 square meters, what are the dimensions of the field? So area is base times height, so that's going to be W times 2W minus 10, and I like to put the W in the front. That's a W, uh, equals 1,000. And we have to solve this polynomial equation. So we have to expand this side and bring everything over to the same side. So I'm going to bring the um, 1,000 to the left side, so negative 1,000. And you could try and factor this as a complex trinomial, but don't take out the 2. It's going to become a simple trinomial, W squared minus 5w minus 500. And you have to find factors of 500 that are going to subtract to give 5. Um, I'll cut to the chase here. It's going to be 25 times 20. So I've got my w and w. I'm going to have a 25 and a 20. And positive on the 20, negative on the 25. My two solutions would be w equals 25 or w is equal to negative 20. It's asking me for the dimensions. If you tried using negative 20, that wouldn't make any sense for the height. You can't have a negative height. So I got to scrap that answer. And so my width will be 25. And my length would be 2 times 25 minus 10, which is equal to 40. It said find the dimensions. So let's answer the question. Length equals 40 meters width equals 25 meters the next question i already set up for us the rectangle is 2x squared plus 5x minus 8 long and x centimeters wide if the area is 20 determine the possible values of x so Again, area is base times height, so it's going to be x times 2x squared plus 5x minus 8 equal to 20. And the routine is always the same. Expand, bring everything to the same side. So this is going to be 
2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x, and the 20 is going to come over. And I got four terms. Uh-oh, haven't seen this kind of factoring for a little bit. Four terms, there's nothing that simplifies. Uh, there's no leg terms for everything. There's no GCF. So I'm going to pair them up and factor this by grouping in pairs. So out of the first pair, I can take out an x squared. Out of the second pair, I can take out a negative 4. And when we do this, we have to get brackets that match. And the 2x plus 5s come out in front. You suck them up together as a single bracket, and your leftover is x squared minus 4. The leftovers just drop into that second bracket equals to 0. Now, you might think you have the answers already, but you've got to recognize that x squared minus 4 is going to factor even further. Okay, so the 2x plus 5 won't change, but x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. So it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. And so my three solutions uh, for these three brackets, out of the first one, it's going to be 2x plus 5 is going to give me x is equal to negative 5 over 2. The second bracket is going to give me x is equal to negative 2. And the third bracket, x equals positive 2. And I'm going to scrap both of those negative answers. It asked me the possible, value, possible values of x. These are all three of them. But the only one that's going to make sense is x is equal to 2. Okay, moving on to the last example. And this is the Pythagorean theorem question, which always looks complicated, but it's, it's kind of the same kind of routine over and over. You know for the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, except that this time we have polynomials, or in this case binomials, representing those three sides. So I've got to take the square of x minus 3, the square of x plus 4, those are the two legs, and is going to equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Now, we're going to run out of time with the video, so I've got to speed things up a little bit. This is going to come out to x squared minus 6x plus 9. Remember, you can't just distribute that in there. And that's a no-no. And the second bracket is going to become x squared plus 8x plus 16. And the square of the last bracket is going to be 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x, which is minus 12x plus 9. Choosing which side to bring it to. Well, 4x squared is going to be bigger than the x squared plus the x squared. So I'm going to bring everything to the right. Now, I find it much less complicated to actually simplify each side first. So the left side is going to become 2x squared plus 2x plus 25. And then I'm going to bring the stuff over to the other side. By crossing the equal signs, everything becomes oppositized. So there's going to be nothing left here. It'll be 4x squared minus 2x squared minus 12x minus 2x plus 9 minus 25 equals... 2x squared minus 14x minus 16, which reduces, or sorry, we factor out a 2 and we get x squared minus 7x minus 8. And that factors, running out of space here, 0 equals 2 times x minus 8, x plus 1. And what are the roots or the values? Well, the 2 doesn't give me a solution, but the 8, x minus 8, says that x could be equal to 8, and the x plus 1 says that x could be equal to negative 1. So those are my two solutions, but as before, the negative 1 is not going to make any sense. So it says, what are the numerical dimensions? 8 minus 3 is going to be equal to 5. 8 plus 4 is going to be equal to 12. And 2 times 8 minus 3 is going to come out to be 13. Those are my three dimensions. All right, got this in in under 15 minutes. Hopefully this was helpful to you, and good luck studying this, and I hope it all makes sense to you.